Welcome to day 30 of our Life Class Daily Devotion and we are still at our week 5 encounter. So today our topic is about 180 degrees. So why 180 degrees? Uh, in Proverbs 28 verse 13, it says here, um, and it will answer our question later, it says here, People who conceal their sins will not prosper, but if they confess and turn from them, they will receive mercy. So the verse above na sinabi ni King Solomon speaks about two requirements for us to receive what we call divine mercy. So first is confessing our sins and second, turning away from them. So itong combination na to, this combination is what we call repentance. And repentance means a change in attitude towards sin and God. So, balikan natin yung question that I posed earlier. So, why 180 degrees? So, imagine yourself na naglalakad ka. Okay, so naglalakad ka towards um, a certain direction. And then, narealize mo na mali pala na yung dinadaanan mo. So, yung question ko, paano ka tatalikod dun sa maling daan? So, ang kailangan mong gawin ay iikot, tama? So, iikot ka, but the question is, ilang degrees? 360 degrees ba? Kasi pag 360 degrees, kung nakaharap ka for example dito at umikot ka na 360 degrees, bumalik ka lang rin dun sa maling daan. So umikot ka and then you turn back dun sa maling daan. So kaya nga dapat 180 degrees. And 180 degrees, um, kapag 180 degrees, it, it shows that you turn back dun sa maling daan and you and, and, and pag kinonek natin siya sa buhay natin, you turned away from sin and you turn towards God. So that is the concept of repentance. And itong repentance, it's more than just you uh, saying a nice prayer or crying out your heart in the presence of God. Kailangan na you have a change in the way you think and the way you act. Na hindi lang puro emotions but even yung mind mo and yung action mo. Na when we repent, we recognize our mistakes, our failures, and our weaknesses na we, we know that alam natin na wala namang magagawa actually yung pagtatago or yung pagkukonceal mo pa ng mga kasalanang nagawa mo. We take sin as sin and we confess it to God and repent and totally turn away from it. Although nakakalungkot kasi maraming tao, hanggang doon lang po sila doon sa tinatago na confession na part na sasabihin nila, Lord, ito yung nagawa kong mali, patawarin niyo po ako, Lord, nare-recognize nila yung sins nila, pero hindi sila willing i-abandon ito completely or talikuran ito completely. So, tanong siguro natin, eh, yun nga, eh, mahirap actually yung talikuran yung mga kasalanang nagagawa natin or yung mga, mga mali nating nagagawa. Meron ba talagang nakakapag-repent? Or is there a, a concept of true repentance? In the Bible, there's a story of a man named Zacchaeus. And this man is a tax collector. So during that time, uh, yung mga Jews or yung mga Hudyo, galit sila sa mga tax collectors. Why? Because they are corrupt. They would um, take more than what is required from people so that yung excess ay ibubulsa na lang nila. And that times, they would force people to um, give yung mga taxes nila para lang uh, magkaroon sila ng yun nga, nung excess para meron silang mabul- mabulsa or maitago. So in other words, power tripping. Magagamitin mo yung lakas mo, yung, yung force mo, yung authority mo to coerce someone to do what you expect them to do kahit na it is not ano, legal. So yun yung nangyayari sa kanila. Pero one day, nung pumunta si Jesus sa bahay ni Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus encountered Jesus and he repented of his sins. Pero tanong siguro niyo uli ako, paano ko nasabi or paano nasabi dun sa story na true repentance yung ginawa ni Zacchaeus. Hindi lang ba yun yung parang oh, nalungkot ka, umiyak ka, um, sumigaw ka, ganun. Pero uh, hindi ka naman talaga nagrepent sa sins mo. If we look at Luke 19 verses 8 to 9, it says here, Meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood before the Lord and said, I will give half my wealth to the poor, and if I have cheated people on their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. In verse 9, it says, Jesus responded, Salvation has come to this home today, for this man has shown himself to be a true son of Abraham. 
So here makikita natin yung two requirements as I mentioned earlier. The two requirements for divine mercy in, in Proverbs 28 verse 13. Zacchaeus first confessed his sins when he said, Jesus, I have cheated these people under taxes. So he confessed it with his mouth. And second is he turned away from his sins. It says in the following verses, sabi niya, I will give um, half my wealth to the, to the poor and I will give them four times pa nung, nung kinuha ko sa kanila. So again, repentance, the combination of both happens not just in our mind, not just in our hearts, but in our action. And that is true repentance. And God also wants us to experience the same thing this afternoon. Na, of course, hindi naman tayo require ni Lord na dumabas ka, tumakbo ka kung saan, ipangalandakan mo na, or ipagsigawan mo that you have repented. But what God expects from all of us is that apart from confessing our sins, we completely turn away from it and act on it. We act on our sins. Na kung may mga kailangan kang itapon, may mga kailangan kang tanggalin, kung may mga kailangan kang iwasan, for you to completely turn away from your sins, then do it. But remember, God will help you overcome. And of course, you have your cell leader to guide you along your journey para siya'y maging ano, prayer partner mo. So this afternoon, before we pray, I want you to reflect on the things na alam mong kailangan mo pang i-repent kay Lord. And I want you to think of concrete steps that you need to do to completely turn away from all those things or from all those sins. And um, we have our comment area again. If you can write down sa comment area, ano ba yung mga steps that we can do to turn away from our sins para we can also encourage others who are watching with us right now. And of course, may mga sabi nyo, syempre may mga sensitive or medyo more serious concerns na, na nagawa natin. So I want you to take time to share that to your cell leaders para meron kang tinatawag na accountability partner and I'm sure they would be more than willing to help you overcome it ako along your journey until na, until such time na talagang naset fit ka na doon. Again, repentance is not just confession, it is also action. So kaya nga, this time, ang, ang question lang sa atin is, are you ready to surrender everything? And again, you have to make a decision now. So repentance should be evident in us inside out. So this time, habang, um, sige, you can just keep on commenting or writing your answers and even after we pray. But we're gonna pray this time and then we're also gonna pray for our prayer concerns. So can I ask everyone, let's just close our eyes and um, let's remember yung mga bagay na kailangan pa natin i-repent and i-confess and patuloy na talikuran. Um, so that we can experience yung um, tinatawag na mercy and, and freedom from the Lord. So come on, let's pray. Yes, oh God. Father, we thank you once again for this time, this afternoon, na muli, together with everyone who's watching, who's listening, we can learn new things from you, Lord God. And the, the word that we receive today is we want to turn away completely from our sins. As you said, you were a word in Proverbs 28 verse 13, Lord, yung, yung repentance is confessing our sins and turning away from them. So this time, Lord God, sa lahat ng mga nakikinig, lahat ng nanonood, we are remembering everything, Lord God, lahat pa ng mga bagay na hindi pa namin completely natatalikuran. Lord, yung mga sins na nagagawa pa rin namin. Lord, yung mga failures pa rin namin, mga mistakes, Lord God, weaknesses na hindi pa rin namin, Lord, ma-overcome. This time, Lord God, you're confessing it. If you can um, say it, yung i-confess mo with your mouth, yung bagay na yon, say it right now. And Lord, you hear our prayers, you hear yung mga confessions na inyong mga anak. And this time, Lord God, sa lahat ng nag-speak out, sa lahat, Lord God, ng inalalay yung mga sins na nagagawa pa namin. Lord, we are making a conscious decision this time in our mind, in our heart, and we're gonna act on it. Lord, we're completely turning away from all those sins. Lord, if there are things that we have to, um, mga kailangan na namin itapon, Lord God, so that hindi na namin ito mabalikan, we are renouncing it, Lord God, and we are turning away from it, and we want to make a, a, a step of faith, Lord God, for, for to, to keep on moving forward in our journey with you. So God, we, we repent of all our sins, and we ask God that you 
forgive us and that you accept us, Lord God. Thank you so much for the forgiveness of our sins. And Lord, I know na maliban, so Lord, sa lahat ng mga nakikinig, you also, Lord God, want to heal our land. And so this time, Father, we are interceding in prayer for our country. Lord, we lift up to you lahat, Panginoon, ng mga um, nangangailangan pa ng, ng kagalingan sa sakit, Lord God, especially sa COVID-19. Lord, we speak healing to come to them. As we apply your blood that you shed on your back, uh, Lord, it symbolizes healing. We are speaking healing right now sa lahat ng may sakit, even, Lord God, beyond the COVID. We're speaking healing right now sa lahat ng nakikinig, Lord God. We apply your blood over them as we place our hands sa part ng aming katawan, Lord, na may nararamdaman na sakit. We're speaking healing right now and we speak your hand, Lord, and your power to move over everyone who's listening. So pray, Lord God, more than... Um, Uh, yung, yung physical healing, we speak also healing, Lord God, emotionally, Lord, um, financially, spiritually sa mga nangangailangan. Lord, alam namin na nagkaroon na ng economic um, change in our country, but we pray that you stabilize, Lord God, our economy, especially, Lord, sa mga nagtatrabaho. Sa, of course, all of us may pangangailangan kami sa aming family. So I pray for your provision to be upon us. As you said, the word in Philippians, you supply all our needs. And so we receive it by faith. Lord, that you're already providing it. Lord, sa lahat na nakikinig, we are claiming, Lord God, and receiving the provision na nagmumula sa inyo at tinatanggap na namin ito, Panginoon. We also praying, Lord God, na patuloy as we um, transition, Panginoon, that you guide our government, Lord, sa mga decision, sa mga strategies pa nagagawin to maintain, Lord God, yung, yung, uh, yung mga guidelines na kailangan namin gawin para, Lord, ma-ensure na patuloy na ma- ma- ma-overcome na namin itong virus na ito. Lord, they pray for unity among every sectors of our society from the government to the church, Lord God, to every institution, Panginoon, and every families will work together. Even we also pray for all churches, Lord God, that That as we transition, Lord, sa um, a more more opportunities to have mass gatherings, Lord, I pray na patuloy na ihanda niyo pa pa rin po yung church sa aming online ministry, sa aming new norm, Panginoon, that Lord, every church will uh, continually take its position, patuloy na maging ilaw, Lord God, patuloy na maging spiritual frontliners, at patuloy, Lord, na... Um, ma-empower pa ang yung mga tao. Lord, there's so many people struggling right now emotionally. Lord, um, nalagang nag-worry pa rin sila, may fear pa rin sila. But I pray that we take our position. You bless every pastors, every leader, especially Lord God, to our um, Bishop um, Bishop Coriel Baliano, Panginoon, si uh, Pastora Geraldine, Lord, si Pastor Alvin, si Pastora May, si uh, Pastor Cesar Castellanos, Lord God, si Pastora Claudia, even Lord God, for Pastor Gani, for Pastora Tess, for our um, IPH leaders, for um, uh, Bishop Doug Beecham, Pastor Russell Bohr, Pastor Tim Saini, we speak your blessings to be upon them, direction, protection, and provision to be upon them, Lord God. We thank you for these leaders that you've called and you've set apart to lead and to guide us in this situation kung nasaan kami. We're also speaking life, Lord God, strength, and patuloy na hope to be upon, to be upon every CIA family na maging ilaw kami kung nasaan man kami, Lord God, sa Makati, sa Mandaluyong, sa Taguig, Lord, sa Um, sa Pateros, Lord, sa Baguio, everywhere, Lord, sa Ortigas, sa Cavite, sa Paranaque, Lord, even sa Bicol, God, sa Batangas, Lord, we pray that where you set us, we will shine your light. As you said in your, in your word in Matthew 5, we will shine your light, Lord God. Thank you so much, Father. We thank you for the unity of your church in this time of crisis. And Lord, I pray again sa lahat ng mga nakikinig. I speak blessings to be upon them, provision, protection to be upon them. Thank you so much for this time. Thank you for the power of your word. We thank you for your forgiveness and for the blessings that you have blessed us with. We thank you so much, Father God. We honor you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So again, maraming salamat po for joining us this afternoon. And we're excited to see you again tomorrow with your family, with your friends, with your cell group sa pagtuloy po natin dito sa ating life class daily devotion. Thank you and God bless everyone. Thank you.